Hello everyone, my name is Chen Chen, and the title of this talk is Improved Heuristics for Short Linear Programs. This is a joint work with Payan at the Nanyang Technological University. In this paper, we introduce a new algorithm that finds good implementation of linear systems to reduce the number of XOR gates required. We compared our algorithm to the state-of-the-art algorithm such as PAR as well as Boya Boyata's algorithm and they performed better when we tested them on existing as well as random matrices of different densities. Before we go into the details of the algorithm, let us go through the background as well as the motivation of this problem. In an SPN cipher, the diffusion layer plays an important role in ensuring that the active words are spread out quickly. This means that given two input plain texts that are very similar, the output ciphertext will be very very different. This is often done by, math, by left multiplying the state vector by a matrix that exhibits good diffusion property. One such class will be the MDS matrices, which are already used often in ciphers diffusion layer. Usually, this matrix multiplication takes place in the word size of the cipher. Therefore, the more common ones are in GF to the power of 4 or GF to the power of 8. In order to discuss the number of XOR gates required, we will first convert this into a binary matrix multiplication. As it turns out, multiplying by a fixed element in GF to the power of n can be replaced by n by n binary matrix multiplication. For example, the element 3 in GF to the power of 8 can be written as this 8 by 8 binary matrix with the help of the irreducible polynomial. Here comes the problem. Given any binary matrix n, how can we minimize the number of XOR operations required to compute it? The first and easiest way to count is the naive counting. Basically, we compute the number of XOR required for each row and then we sum them up. In the example here, we basically count the number of XORs that we can see over here, which is 4. Another way to count it is the sequential counting, or you may encounter in literature as GXOR. This basically counts the, num the actual number of sequential XORs required for all the rows. For instance, we can see that X1 and X2 has in common in Y0 and Y1. And therefore, if we do this XOR and store it as a temporary variable T0, we can actually make use of this to compute y0 and y1. In total, we only need 3 xors. Now, let's revisit PAR's algorithm. The idea is very simple. We start by identifying the most frequent pairs of columns, and then we use an xor to compute them. For example, over here, we compare x0 and x1. We have two rows such that both columns have one in them x0 and x2, we have three rows that has one in both of them. We compare everything x, and we can see that x0 and x4 has the most number of rows with ones in both of them. Therefore, we use t0 to represent x0, x or x4, and then we change the, row, the columns x0 and x4 accordingly. So in the case of a type, we can choose the one in lexicographical order, and this is also known as PAR1. In the second choice, we can also exhaust all possible good options, and in that case, it will be PAR2. Now, let's talk about the Boya Payatas algorithm, or BP's algorithm for short. The BP algorithm is a more complicated algorithm compared to PAR's, and it also has a very high time complexity. However, it is able to produce circuits that are way better in size. In the BP algorithm, a set S is initialized with the standard basis E1 all the way to EN. Then, we also measure the distance from the set S to each individual row of the matrix. Each row of the matrix is also known as the target, which eventually we would like to reach. The distance is measured based on the number of XOR required among the elements of the set S 
to that particular row. In, at the very start, since S only contain the standard basis, the distance will be defined as the number of ones or having weight minus one. In each iteration of the VP algorithm, we choose two elements from the set S and add all them together to get a new element. Then we measure the distance once again from set S with the new element to each of the rows. So that for each of this distance, it will either remain the same or reduce by one. Since we are choosing two elements in set S to do the XOR, we notice that there are actually a lot of different pairs that we can choose from. Therefore, we need a criteria to choose the best candidate among all the possible pairs. Suppose such a candidate has been chosen, this candidate is then being added into set S permanently. And then the whole process repeats again. This process will terminate once each of these rows are contained in set S. In the BP's algorithm, the best candidate is chosen such that the L1 norm or the sum of the distances is minimized. In the case of a tie, the L2 norm or the sum of the square of the distances will be used as a tiebreaker. There's also another criteria being introduced by Masole, Ta'a, and Oshmawi, and that is the shortest distance first criteria. Unlike BP, which uses the L1 norm as the criteria, the shortest distance first actually selects the element that is able to reduce as many nearest targets as possible. Over here is an illustration of how these two criteria actually differ. Suppose the current set S has a distance vector to the targets of 3, 4, 4, 2, 4, 5. And there are two possible candidates. The first one is able to reduce it to 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 4. And the second one, 3, 4, 1, 1, 4, 5. The BP criteria favors the first one as it is able to reduce in total four of them. Whereas in STF criteria, it actually favors the second one as row 3 and row 4 are deemed to be the nearest target given by the minimum number minimum distance in the distance vector. Now we can talk about the description given in the BP as well as the PAS algorithm. So all of them suffer about the same issue, which is that the implementation follows a lexicographical order, which did not consider all other pairs that are equally good. In PAR1, it suffers the same issue as BP. For PAR2, it actually exhaustively searched through all possible pairs which is actually quite costly for matrices that are relatively large. One solution that we can have is that whenever we have more than one equally good pairs, we randomly pick one of them, and then we repeat the algorithm k number of times, and then we pack, pick the best circuits out of it. By randomizing the algorithms, it is also a good way to measure how well the criteria or how well the algorithm actually works in general. In this paper, we introduce a new criteria that is a remix combination of the previous two criteria discussed. First, we shortlist all the elements such that at least one of the nearest target is reduced. Next, like VP, we apply the L1 norm criteria to the remaining elements. Then, if there is a type, we will apply the L2 norm criteria. Over here is the example from the previous slide. So again, let's say now we still have a distance vector of 3, 4, 2, 2, 4, 5. And now we have a new candidate, which is 3, 3, 1, 2, 4, 4. Comparing this to the first element, we can see that it only reduces 3 of the rows. Therefore, BP will favor the first one over the third candidate. Comparing to the second candidate, it only reduced one of the two nearest targets, namely row 3 and row 4, and it only reduced row 3. Therefore, the SDF criteria will favor the second candidate over the third one. However, this is the middle point that our criteria wants to choose. The reason for our criteria 
is that after doing several experiments with the BP criteria, we realized that the BP criteria tends to favor rows with higher hemming weights. And our guess is that this is probably because rows with higher hemming weights tends to have more common, more in common with rows with high hemming weights as well, leaving the rows with lower hem hemming weights alone. And since it is based on the L1 norm, all the rows with higher hemming weights will gain the priority as compared to low hemming weights. You can see that as a clustering of the targets or the rows on the far end, and BP travels towards them first. On the other hand, the SDF criteria visits the nearest targets first, solving this issue. However, because it is only focused on the nearest distance, it is unable to choose a good path for the next target ahead. What we really want is something in between them. While we still have to visit the targets with high distance eventually, what we want is that targets with low distance will be a stepping stone towards them. Next, we also did some local optimization after obtaining the circuits from our algorithm. First, we apply Yosis, which is a very long RTL synthesis tool that does some optimization. Also, we introduce some local optimization techniques. One of them is actually shown over here. Suppose that we have part of the circuit that's shown over here, and we decided that we want to analyze T3. So T3 is actually made up of T1, XOR, X2. And T1, if you look further down, it's actually made up of X0, XOR, X1. Then we permitted X0, X1, X2 to get the other possible trees out of it. So the first one is actually implemented in the circuit itself. The second and the third are the other possible ways to actually compute T3. Now, if you look at the second tree, the second tree actually made it from T2. In this case, we can actually write T3 as T2 XOR X1. And let's say if we rewrite this into the circuit, we notice that T1 has no place in this circuit anymore. And therefore, T1 can be removed. This is the basis of how the local optimization actually work in order to shave off a few more XORs out of the circuits. Over here, we show the results of comparing our algorithm with the BP algorithm on random matrices. To recall, A1 refers to the one without the tiebreaker, and A2 refers to the one with the tiebreaker. We use random matrices of size 15 by 15 to 20 by 20, and densities spread across 0.1 to 0.9. The improvement is more obvious when we increase the size and peaking when the density is about 0.4 to 0.6. This table shows the percentage of the best circuit obtained by each of the algorithm. Note that this percentage don't add up to be 100% because some of them actually share the same number of XORs. And you can see A2 is the one that is leading the chart. Next, we also ran our algorithms on the matrices from Dubois and Laurent. These matrices are specially crafted MDS matrices, which focus on reducing the amount of XOR gates required for them. In this table, we show the amount of XOR required for the construction as well as the other algorithms. For a fair comparison, we are not comparing our algorithms with the construction cost, as the construction is specialized to each individual matrix. However, interestingly, A2 has managed to get a lower XOR count for some of the matrices as compared to the construction cost. As for the other algorithms, the BP, PAR2, 
RSDF refers to a randomized version of the shortest distance first algorithm. RMBP refers to the randomized BP algorithm. And A1 and A2 are introduced as before. So we can see that over here, A2 has been getting the lowest XOR count compared to other algorithms from most of the matrices. Note that this table actually shows the XOR count for the 16 by 16 matrices. In this table, we show the XOR count of the 32 by 32 matrices. In this table, we can see that RMBP and A2 are the ones getting the lowest XOR count. Next, we also ran our algorithm on the AES mixed column matrix. And with A2, we managed to obtain a circuit of 94XOR. Very recently, two papers have further improved our results for AES matrix to 92XOR. In conclusion, A1 and A2 criteria perform the best when the densities of the matrices are about half. While the savings for these matrices right now are just a few XORs, that's because the matrix size itself is not large. The eventual goal is actually to target larger matrices such as the one used in low MC cipher. In those cases, the savings will become significant. However, our algorithm is very BP-like, which makes it too costly if the matrix grows very large. This is mainly due to the distance checking function that actually checks all possible combinations in order to know the exact distance. Next, we believe that more techniques in local optimization may actually lead to an even lower XOR count. And this has a very, very huge area to explore. Lastly, the average cost of implementing a matrix with a density 0.9 is actually less than one with a density of 0.2. Most of the ciphers out there use matrices that are lightweight in nature because of their low implementation cost. However, with the improvements in algorithms for linear programs like this, we may actually widen the search for MDS matrices or near MDS matrices in order to use in ciphers. With that, I conclude my presentation. Thank you for your attention.